We present Dixon of Doc Green, with David Calder as PC George Dixon, David Tennant as PC Andy Crawford, and Charlie Brooks as Mary Dixon. Crawford's First Pinch, dramatised by Sue Rodwell from the television screenplay by Ted Willis. Evening, all. And a fine evening it is. We've had a good summer so far. Well, it's nice to see people out and about enjoying the sun. Mind you, it brings the thieves out as well. We had quite a spate of bicycle thefts a month or two back. It's big business round Doc Green, and someone was making a fortune from it. CID wanted results, so Sergeant Flint sent us foot soldiers out to see if we could nab a few likely lads in the act. See if a minnow or two would lead us to the big fish. But you had to keep your mind on the job, which is what I was trying to tell Andy. Oh, I'm beginning to think it'll never happen, George. Just give it time. Oh, it's easy for you to see. Have a bit of patience, Andy. We've all been through it. No. It's just I'm sure everyone's laughing about it down at the station. Not quite everyone. <laughs> hmm. How long does it take you? Well, I had a bit of luck. Nabbed a bag snatch on my first day on the beat. There you are. It's hopeless. I'm never going to arrest anybody. Well, keep your eyes peeled and you might get the chance sooner than you think. What do you mean? That lad. Riding the bicycle over there. What about him? You tell me. Observation, lad. What do you notice about him? Uh, well, um, he looks about uh, 18 or 19, a bit scruffy. He could do with a shave, but he seems harmless enough. Anything else? Uh, I don't think so. He's riding a lady's bicycle. So he is. You think he stole it? What was the description of that bike taken from outside the library this morning? Um, hang on. Uh, Parker Special Speed Start, ladies' racing model. Well, that looks like a racing model to me. He's riding into Ned Cooney's yard. Ned Cooney? He's a local junk dealer, between stretches and the scrubs. He's been inside. In and out for 30 years. And what are we waiting for? Uh, uh, hang on, hang Oh, not quite so fast, PC Crawford. Afternoon. What do you want? Is that your bike? You can't just walk in here. It's private. The gate was wide open. Does the bicycle belong to you? None of your business. I've reason to believe it might be stolen. <laughs> stolen? What makes you think that? It's a lady's bike. No. Well, what do you know? So it is. And you were riding it? What if I was? Who does it belong to? Like I said, none of your business. It is our business, my lad. Reinforcements. Can't you handle me on your own? Aye, that's enough of your cheek. Now just answer PC Crawford's questions. I've done nothing. Are you trying to stitch me up? We'd like to check the frame number on that bike, if you don't mind. What if I do What's mind? What's going on here, officer? Oh, Mr Dixon. Ned. What have you been up to, Joe? Nothing, Dad. This is never your joke. <laughs> it is. It's grown a bit since you last saw him. He certainly has. So, what can we do for you? They were asking about Hilda's bike. What about you? This bicycle answers the description of a machine stolen this morning. It's my daughter's. Can you prove that? Do I have to? If you've got a receipt for it, Ned. Once a thief, always a thief. Is that it, Mr Dixon? Or we could have a word with your daughter. You can't. Why not? Because she's not here. Shut up, Joe. Where is she, Ned? Uh, she's away. She's working away from home for a bit. <laughs> You're not too old for a clout, my lad. Get inside. There's a load of lead pipe you needs unloading. Your mother wants us home by six. I'll get shifting. Not my fault the coppers pick on me. Don't mind him, Mr Dixon. Joe's not a bad lad. I'm sure he isn't. He's had a lot to put up with from his old man. Our family has come to that. I'd like to check the frame number. It's Ned. not stolen. Nothing in his place is, believe it or not. I turned over a new leaf after last time. Oh, go ahead. Do what you need to do. Thanks. Oh, yes, it's a nice bike. Looks almost brand new. It is. It was a birthday present for Hilda. She only rode it a few times and lost interest. You know how kids are. <laughs> I do. Yeah. And my daughter was just about the same that age. <laughs> now, make a note of this number, Andy. Right. Uh, five, eight, uh, six, four, nine. Now check it against the list. You won't find it. Well, I'm sure we won't. So, what's Hilda up to these days? What do you mean? Well, she must have left school by now. Well, she'll be 22 next birthday. No. Oh. Time flies. Yeah, it does. The number's not on the list. Told you. 
Don't suppose I'll be getting an apology, will I? We're only doing our job, Ned. Yeah, that's what you said last time you nicked me. It was true then as well. Come on, Andy. I'm sure Ned wants us out of here. I, I do have work to do. And we've a few more pavements to pound yet before we can go home. Afternoon, Ned. Afternoon, Mr Dixon. And it's PC Crawford. You won't mind if I say I hope I don't see you again for a while. <laughs> Not at all, Ned. I feel the same way. Joe? Joe? They gone? Yeah. I don't want you bringing coppers into my yard again. I didn't. They saw me on the bike. They thought I'd stolen it. That Scottish one, he wouldn't listen. Why was you riding it in the first place? Just going down the shops. Joe? I know this bloke. He wants to buy it. It ain't yours to sell. Hilda won't be needing it, will she? It's your sister's bike and it'll stay here till she comes home. All right. I'd have liked a chance to look around Cooney's yard. Yeah, I'm sure you would. But you need a warrant for that, and a good reason. He shot the gate after us pretty sharpish. Well, I don't suppose he wants anyone else wandering in off the streets. Well, I don't suppose he does. That yard is the perfect place for hiding stolen goods. I know how much you want to nab somebody, Andy. But it's best if they've committed a crime first. Wow. Well. Oh, come on. Let's try and find at least one of those bikes on the list before we go home for tea. Hmm. Sorry, Dad, I haven't started cooking yet. I was kept late at the office. Oh, that's all right, love. Oh, I don't know about Andy, but I could do with a snooze before tea. Hard day. Very frustrating. Oh, so many bikes on the streets and not one of them stolen. You still haven't made use of your shiny new handcuffs then, PC Crawford? That was only funny the first time I heard it. I'm going for a wash. Uh, <laughs> what did I say? Oh, sore subject, love. He didn't have to bite my head off. Don't use all the soap. I've got Dad's collars to scrub tonight. Sorry. Why didn't you go upstairs? Find yourself a bath. I'm fine. If you don't mind me using the sink. As long as you rinse it round before I peel the carrots. Of course. I'm sorry, Mary. I shouldn't have snapped at you. It's just I get the same joke at the station every single day. Well, I'll try to be a bit more original next time. If only I could make one arrest. An old lady dropping litter would do. There's more to being a good policeman than just arresting people. Maybe, but I'm going to get into CID. I don't know why you'd want to. Well, I'm not going to stay on the beat all my life. Not like Dad, you mean? I know George is happy enough where he is, but it wouldn't suit me. How dare you be so patronising? What? I wasn't. If Dad hadn't had to bring me up on his own after Mum died, he could have been commissioner at New Scotland Yard by now. I'm sure he could. Oh, people like you always look down on someone who sticks at a job and does it well. What do you mean people like me? Oh, over-ambitious, intolerant. You don't know anything about me. I know what I see. What's all this row? It's nothing, Dad. That's right, nothing at all. Honestly, you two, sometimes you go on at each other like an old married couple. Oh, it's a frosty tea we had that evening, I can tell you. But Ned Cooney soon took my mind off whatever was ailing Mary and young Andy. Oh, it's quite a while since I've been in Doc Green, Nick. Well, I must say, I was surprised to see you come through the door, Ned. Yeah, well, needs must. I have to talk to you about something, Mr Dixon. Well, we won't be disturbed in here. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Is this about the bicycle? Uh, no, no, I was straight with you about that. It's Hilda's bike, like I said. Well, you didn't seem very happy to have me and Andy in the yard the other day. Well, never like coppers snouting round. Yeah, especially if you've got something to hide. Nothing criminal, Mr Dixon. I've just got a job lot of Davy Crockett hats. They're going to be a big seller. I don't want the opposition hearing about and muscling in, so keep mum. Well, what is worrying you, then? I thought you'd be interested in these. Postcards? Turn them over. Take a look at the pictures on the front. Well, these are a bit racy, Ned. I don't know, I know it. Where'd you get them? Through the letterbox. I'm surprised the postman delivered cards like these. They came in a plain brown envelope. Well, they might be near the knuckle, but uh, well, I don't think these pictures are actually illegal, so you haven't broken the, the law. Girl. It's Hilda. No. Straight up. Oh, I'm sorry, Ned. Well, I'm... I don't know what to say. If her mother finds out what she's up to, well, I don't bear thinking about. Have you spoken to Hilda about these? Uh, we had an argument a few weeks back. Over nothing, as usual. Uh, staying out late. She said she was old enough to do as she pleased, and I said, not in my house, you're not, and she walks out. I haven't seen her since. 
or not, and these came through the door. Do you know where they were taken? There's a note on one of them. Um, I thought you'd like to see these. If you want any more, try DeWitt's Photographic Studio. He's, um, he's signed it friend. Some friend. Yeah. Do you know who this friend is? Probably some dealer who reckons I charge him over the odds for scrap. Well, he's got his own back in spades. So what are you going to do? Well, I wanted to knock this DeWitt into the middle of next week, but if I did that, the wife would have something to say. And it wouldn't make Hilda come home. She'd probably take his side. Anything to get back at her dad. Oh, surely Hilda doesn't feel that way. Oh, I wish I knew how she felt. She's put up with a lot because of me, my daughter. When I got out last time, I really did turn over a new leaf. Honest. And it looks like it was too late as far as she was concerned. I don't know what I can do, Ned. Well, arrest this to wit. Well, unless there are more explicit photographs, he may not actually have committed any crime. <laughs> Uh, criminal enough. Well, even if they were, do you really want Hilda standing up in court giving evidence? Oh, she wouldn't do that. It'd kill her if everyone knew. We couldn't stop it getting in the papers. News of the world would lap it up, wouldn't they? Oh. Hilda's a good kid, Mr Dixon. Joe, too. They're not going to end up like their dad. I won't let them. Sell my bike? What do you want to do that for, Joe? I could get six or seven knicker for it. Could you? I'd split it with you half and half, Hilda. Well, that's very generous of you, considering it belongs to me. 60-40, then. What are you up to, little brother? What do you mean? Well, Dad still pays you, Danny, for helping out the yard. Yeah. So why do you need to sell my bike? There's this bloke. He's after as many bikes as I can find for him. Find or steal? Don't know what you mean. Oh, you want to impress him, don't you? Pretend you pinched a shiny new bike. Trying to make him think you're a big-time criminal, are you? What do you care? How do you think Mum will feel if you end up in jail? I won't. Don't you think she's had enough on her plate with Dad all these years? What do you care? You've opted. it. I wasn't having Dad tell me what to do day and night. Get a move on, Elder. I thought you said you'd only be ten minutes. Oh, sorry, I'm just coming. Who's this? None of your business, Sunshine. It is my business. Leave it, Joe. You've got appointments all afternoon. All right, I'm coming. Don't let him bully you. <laughs> we are a pair, aren't we, Joe? Dad would be proud. Chop, chop. Now, don't forget, your time's my money, love. <laughs> no, Paul. I wouldn't forget that. I wasn't sure what I could do to help, Ned. At least not without Hilda getting involved with the police. I reckon it'd break Mrs Cooney's heart if Hilda went down the same road as her husband. It'd break Ned's heart, come to that. I was still chewing it over when young Andy... Well, I suppose he caught my hand in a way. Oh, is it time for me to have a wash and brush up before tea, love? Yeah, of course, Dad. Hard day. Oh, busy. How about you? It wasn't too bad. Old Mason wants me to train up a couple of girls from the typing pool. Oh, good for you. I don't know what I'd done if you'd gone off the rails, Mary. <laughs> there wasn't much chance of that with you around. I still gave you a few sleepless nights, didn't I? Oh, that was just high spirits. Mm. Are you all right? Yes, love. Oh, it is bucketing down out there. You go and have your wash, Dad. Right. Well... Looks like you've had your bath already, Andy. Hi. <laughs> Am I forgiven, Mary? I suppose so. Always putting my foot in it. Reason I had to leave Scotland. <laughs> Why did you leave? Cos I'm an overambitious, intolerant... <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> now, would you mind clearing up in here while I start cooking, or we are never going to eat this evening? Right, yard officer. Hang Dad's jacket up in the hall. He will leave it lying around all crumpled, and I'm the one who has to iron it. Will do. What's this? What have we here, George? <laughs> well, well. I'd never have believed it of you, you dirty old man. <laughs> Mind you, she's quite a looker. That brother of yours, he won't cause me any trouble, will he? Of course not. <laughs> Looks like quite a bruiser. Oh, it's all right, Paul. Joe doesn't know what I do here. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing, love. These are tasteful photos that punters take. 
And you're a very attractive woman. You want to show off your assets. I'm not attractive. <laughs> Fishing for compliments now. No. You know you're beautiful. You're too good for this place. So... When am I going to do some proper modelling? Or yeah. well, dresses and things for the magazines, like you promised. When you're ready for it. You're still a bit self-conscious, and that's not good in a top-flight model. I do try, Paul. Well, you know what you can do to make real money in the meantime. I told you, I'm not going to. Ah, well, they're still just photos. No, Paul. No, all, all, all right, love. I, I wouldn't force you to do anything you didn't want to. You know that. Yes. I respect you too much. I know. Now, get your clothes off. The first puncher will be here in ten minutes. Andy, over there. Suspicious character by the railings. Looks like he's trying to break the padlock on that bike. Let's call her. Oh, no, no, wait. Oh, please, George, just once. Oh, sorry, lad, my mistake. He's the vicar of St Matthews. Oh, he would be. He'd probably just forgotten his keys. So, things all right now between you and Mary? Uh, yeah, just fine. Oh, good. Hope it lasts. Oh, look, George. Where? That butterfly. I thought you'd spotted another likely bicycle. First butterfly I've seen this year. Eyes on the road, Andy. Right, right. Wait, 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 would that have been a Red Admiral? I don't know. Oh, I thought you might. What would you be a nature lover? Nature lover? Aye. What makes you think that? Well, that's just, just an impression, I guess. Well, take your mind off butterflies and keep it on the stolen bicycles instead. Huh, I'll try. What's the matter with you, Andy? I'm sorry, George. Are you going to share the joke? Well, not really a joke. Well, what then? Mary asked me to hang up your jacket. Ooh, well, it doesn't sound very funny to me. I found your postcards. Oh, you did, did you? Ah, they, they sort of fell out of your jacket. And you had a good look at them. Well, she's quite a beauty. Oh, they're not my postcards, Andy. Ned Cooney gave them to me. Cooney? Didn't know he was in that line of business. He isn't. Believe it or not, that beauty's his daughter. No! <laughs> Doesn't get a look from my father, does she? Well, she got him with a bad sort. Name of DeWitt. I told Ned I'd try to help. How are you going to do that? I'm not sure. But I've got a rest day tomorrow. I thought I'd go round to the studio. See if I can talk her into going home. You know where the studio is, then? If you hadn't been so busy looking at the pretty picture, you'd have seen the address written on the back of one of the cards. So we can read it. Arrest this pornographer. Well, I'm not sure it's quite that. Uh, those won't be the only pictures he's taken. There'll be others, much nastier ones, hidden away. Yeah, maybe. I could make my first arrest. Yeah, hold your horses, Andy. Sorry, sorry, George. It's your pinch, of course. No, I don't care about that. But I don't want an innocent girl caught up in this. <laughs> She's hardly innocent. Well, just give me one day, Andy, before you say anything to Sergeant Flint. Or to anyone else. Just the one day? Ned's put his family through a lot over the years. I want to give him the chance to make things up to him. Yeah. Yeah, I can get you all the bikes you want. Easy. Yeah, just as good as the racer. No, no, I've got the perfect place to store them. Give me a chance and I'll get you as many as you need. No, let me worry about the coppers. Hang on, someone wants to... Joe! I've got to go. I'll call you again tomorrow. Joe! I've been looking for you all over. There's a van load of bricks needs unloaded. Sorry, Dad. I'll be right there. Who was that? Just a friend. Harry Lawrence. You remember him? What are you up to? Nothing. Then why are you lying? I'm not. I've been lied to by some of the best in the business, Joe. I can always tell. Harry knows someone who wants a bit of storage space. What for? Joe. Bikes. There's plenty of room in the yard. It's all above board. Oh. I didn't think you were so stupid. What? Who have you got yourself tied up with? I don't know what you mean. I'm going to find out if it takes all day. I've got work to do. You stay here, Joe. I'm only doing what you did. And you'll end up where I ended up. No, I won't. First the order, now you. I won't let it happen, Joe. I won't. You shouldn't be here, Ned. I want to go with you, Mr Dixon. Talk to my daughter. Then leave it to me. I just want to tell her I'm sorry. I know it's all my fault what's happened. Let me go in there, see how the land lies. Try and show Hilda what sort of man this DeWitt really is. I mean, if I storm in, I'll just put my foot in it, make things worse. <laughs> You're probably right. 
But you stay here, Ned. I won't be long. And with any luck, when I come out, Hilda will be with me. Don't get dressed just yet, love. Well, I thought I was finished for the day. Just one more. Some old gent phoned up a while ago. I said we could fit him in. Paul? He'll pay well. I'm tired. Don't whine. He'll make lines round that lovely mouth of yours. Don't be silly. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm just... I'm tired, like I said. That'll be him. Go and splash some water on your face. Wake you up. And put on that bright red lipstick I've got you. Punters like that. All right, for your two guineas, your model will pose three times. She'll stay up that end of the room, and you stay down here with the camera, right? Yeah. Which girl is it? Diane. Huh. How many models you got? Oh, just the one girl on today. Of course, I've got dozens on my books. Oh, this is a big agency, is it? Oh, big enough. Oh, well, I thought it'd look a bit more ritzy in here. You take your pictures, you don't talk to the model, and you pay me in cash. Agreed? Agreed. That'll be two guineas. <laughs> You'll get it after I get my pictures. Oh, cash in advance. Well, sorry, I don't pay for something I haven't seen first. Oh, I'm afraid I can't allow that. Well, those are my terms. Take them or leave them. All right. I'll send Diane in. Uh, do you stay in here while I take the photographs? Oh, no, you gentlemen like your privacy, don't you? <laughs> but if there's any monkey business, I'll just be in the next room, so keep your hands to yourself. Do you want me standing or sitting down? Sideways or full? I'd like you to keep the dressing gown on, Diane. Or should I say Hilda? How did you know? It, it's not Mr Dixon, is it? It is. I never thought you'd come to a place like this. I wanted to talk to you. How did you know I was here? Your father... What's Dad got to do with it? He doesn't know what I'm doing, does he? Well, I'm afraid he does. He's called the police. That's a laugh. Yeah, this is an unofficial visit. He wants you to come home, Hilda. Fat chance. Well, you'd rather stay here. It's a good job, and it pays. <laughs> what would you make? Fifteen bob a sitting? Might do. Uh, less. And your friend took me for two guineas. Two? Yeah, that's quite a profit he's making on you. Well, he's got expenses keeping this place up. By this stuff, it can't cost him much. I'm learning to be a real model. You're being taken for a ride. I'll be modelling clothes soon for proper glossy magazines. Who are you trying to convince, Hilda? Me or yourself? Are you going to take your pictures? You had a good job, a proper job. Why did you leave it? Because I've got a father, haven't I? Oh, what do you mean? You wouldn't understand. Well, try me. Every job I've ever had. It's all right at the start, then someone finds out about Dad being inside. Well, they're very kind about it, but I notice they start locking drawers and cupboards when I'm around. Like father, like daughter. Well, this is your answer. A sleazy job... It's not sleazy. It's glamour photography. Glamour? Do you want to know how your father found out you were working here? Well, sticking his nose in where it's not wanted. Postcards. What? Your pictures aren't just hidden away in albums. They've been passed around pubs on street corners for everyone to see. You're lying. Well, take a look. Hilda! Hey! Hilda! Dad! How can burst in? Oh, yes, I can. That's my daughter you're ruining. Uh, ruining? Bit far gone for that. Paul! Sorry, love, but it's the truth. Oh. You come! Oh. Hey, hey, Ned, come, hey, calm down, it. Ned, calm down. Call the police, Hilda! I am the police. What? Come home, Hilda, please. If not for me, then for your mother's sake. I'll try and make things up to you. To all three of you. It's too late, Dad. No, it isn't. Get arrested, Ned, if you're a copper. Arrest who, sir? That that case. Here, be. My nose is broken. Oh, I thought I saw you trip on a floorboard, sir. Shocking <laughs> state this place is in. Please, Hilda, give me one last chance to prove I can be a proper dad. Please. Hilda went back home with Ned. I don't think she was very happy about it. But, given the choice between him and DeWitt... It was probably the lesser of two evils as far as she was concerned. Poor kid. And he wasn't too pleased with me the next day. When they raided the studio, they found DeWitt had hopped it. But things turned out just fine for him in the end, thanks to Ned. It would have been my first pinch. Sorry, Andy, but we've circulated DeWitt's description all over the country. Someone will pick him up soon enough. A lot of good that'll do me. Mind you, I'm still not sure that I've anything to charge him with. Oh, uh, Mr Dixon. Ned, <sighs> how are you? I'm just fine, thanks to you. What about Hilda? Things are a bit awkward between us, but it's early days. It is. I've got something for you. 
and say thank you for what you did. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take anything, you know, bribery and corruption. No, not that sort of thing. It's more by way of a tip. About those bicycle thieves of yours. I thought you didn't know anything about that. Well, let's just say I know someone who got himself involved. That wouldn't be Joe, would it? Yeah, I want to put a lid on it quick before the lad gets in too deep. Um, I'm not an arc, Mr Dixon. This is different. You understand? I think I do. I wish I did. I've uh, written down the address. Uh, if you go there, you'll find the man you're after and the bikes. How do we know this is genuine? All right, Ned. Thanks. It'll be dealt with. Well, I'd better get back to the yard. Work to do. Get some fur hats to shift. <laughs> Good luck. Um, how do we know this tip's genuine? We don't. So you better get along to that address and find out. Me? You. But Ned gave you the tip. Your need is greater than mine, Andy. Thanks, George. Uh, uh, just make sure CID aren't far behind. So young Andy got his first pinch, and a good job he made of it. The bikes were being kept at a big warehouse over near the docks. Andy was first through the door. Nabbed the boss before he could make a run for it. Got himself a commendation, and what was more important, so far as Andy was concerned, a thank you from D.I. Stokes. <laughs> Won't be long before that lad's exchanged his uniform for a desk in CID. And I'll tell you something. I'll miss him. Well, better be getting along now. Evening all. In Dixon of Doc Green, George Dixon was played by David Calder, PC Andy Crawford by David Tennant, and Mary Dixon by Charlie Brooks. Ned Cooney was played by Michael Fenton Stevens, his son Joe by Tom McLean, and his daughter Hilda by Rebecca Smart. DeWitt was played by Christian Rodska. Dixon of Doc Green was dramatised for radio by Sue Rodwell, from the screenplay by Ted Willis, and produced in Bristol by Viv Beebe and Jeremy Howe.